Hey, Richard. Hi, Kevin. How are you? All right. A lot of progress down here, not just for this job, but going back 120 years. Yeah. I mean, there was never an original heating system, and they added one for the caretaker because it was just a summer place. But now, we have a heating system for the next 100 years. A, a nice one, too. Right. Every surface in this building, every horizontal surface has radiant floor heating in it, awesome. all three floors. Awesome. And so we've got a command central board here that we've, we've shown before, but, you know, what it has is this three different floor conditions in this building. It is a work of art. Right, it really is. So right here, this mixing valve is for the tile and the concrete. That needs one water temperature. Then the more R value you put on top of the floor, like carpet, this would be the highest water temperature you're gonna need. And then hardwood floors comes off here. Yep. So the way it works is it's got a, it's got a mixing valve right here that puts out the right water temperature, a brutally smart pump. This pump is so smart, it sort of figures out what it needs all the time okay, and changes the flow rate to everything. Yep. And then through these boxes, every single loop, see these manifolds, these are all through the building, there's about eight of them through the building, we will have a little power head like this that'll have a thermostat say yes or no to every single room. So it's, wow. it's absolute precision. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay? Okay. So now here's tile, here's carpet, here's wood, and we've got, we've got this uh, two lines that are gonna go over to our indirect tank. But I wanna show you something. Anytime you have a hydronic system, that means you're heating water. You have to have stability. You have to have the air eliminated from it. So this is an air eliminator. It really is amazing inside. Anytime this is pumping through here, any of the oxygen bubbles hit these little spindles and it turns into micro bubbles and comes out through here. So it means all the air comes out this way. So you get hydronic stability. Now you can start moving it all over the building, not have an issue. If you didn't have this surface area right here, the air would stay in the water yeah, and, and you might have right to try through. and burp it out at different manifolds yeah. and you're chasing it all the time. This thing scrubs it, okay? So this board is for heating, but you said we'd indirect for right. our hot water right. supply. So right here, these two lines right here come over to an indirect tank. Now, We've used these before, but we've never shown you one naked. <laughs> oh, well, you know, anytime so, you can show me something naked. <laughs> so here is a stainless steel tank, and inside it, it has a coil like this, and it's much longer, the actual coil right. inside. So boiler water passes through this coil. It gives up its heat to the stored volume of water here that started cold and becomes hot. Never mixes. No, no. Nope, it just gives nope. up its heat. No, and then when it's done, look at this. The, the level wow. of insulation it's right like here. Six inches of right. insulation. Right, and that'll be right here. It'll be on every single surface. So it becomes this super insulated thermos bottle ready to go for plenty of hot water for all those bathrooms in this building. Indirect because the fire is over there and it only comes on when this cools down. One flame in this boiler right here. Yep. And this is our gas fired condensing boiler. It's a floor mounted unit. You know, a lot of has changed in these high efficiency boilers. Let me show you. So Kevin, we've talked about this before, you know, the heat loss in any building changes all winter long according to how cold it is outside versus how warm you want it inside. So if you have a typical house like we do with those three different floor conditions, the tile, the carpet, and the wood, the water wants to circulate and just gently modulate all winter long and just change a little as it gets colder. And we first went into super efficient gas-fired condensing boilers. Those boilers were all relatively small and wall hung. Now those wall hung boilers were really efficient, except the, the heat delivery system was looking for a gentle supply to it and the boilers got so hot so quick that they fired up and got quickly hot and then it shut off. So they cycled too much. So we really would like to have the burner stay on longer. So the trend has been to go to larger water content heating device so that the burner has a chance to stay on longer at a lower input. You can see that the temperature in the boiler doesn't get super hot. It actually more closely matches what you're looking for out in the system, and that reduces cycling. Mm -hmm. So this is a, what, what a cutaway is of this larger water content boiler. It helps to understand. You know, what? when these... What? <laughs> Look at you. Okay. When these, when these wall-hung boilers used to first came out, the heat exchangers had relatively small water content. You know, this was one and this was another, and these would be stacked together and the flame would come through. And that's the full volume of water that's that you right, had. That's right, either of those. And so with this, you can see a burner right here. The burner comes with this beautiful flame that will just modulate and change according to how, how cold it is outside. But this is how much water content. See it? Water, 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 water everywhere. Wow. So now that water is gently circulating, you know, through the build, out through it. So it'll actually take, it'll actually take the, uh, the burner's input and just stay on. And it seems backwards, right? Because you say, you're going to leave the burner on? Yeah, we're going to leave the burner on, but at the perfectly lowest amount mm -hmm. versus having to come on 
and off. Also counterintuitive that in this case, bigger is better That's than right. smaller. It's, yeah, but it really is. We want to reduce cycling because we're inefficient when we're cycling. Right, beautiful, love it, thank you. Isn't that cool? So it's, now it might look overwhelming, but it it's does. pretty straightforward, but it's a work of art by Kevin Bilo and his crew. This is water distribution. You got a water meter right here and it comes up here. Faucets, tubs, showers. Okay, and, and what everything. do you think this is? What color? <laughs> That's cold. Cold, this is hot. Uh -huh. So now in an organized way with shutoffs, it goes to every bathroom group in the building. Nice. Now over here is heat distribution. You got manifolds strategically placed throughout the building. Here's the tubing going to the radiant. And now on this wall, we have mixing valves that will put out just the right water temperature for the tile areas wow. or the carpeted areas or the wood floor areas in the building. So these are the zones that we just saw. That's right. Thermostats come back to here. Yep. Super efficient boiler. Firing just right, putting out just the right water temperature for all the loads in the building. I love that it's tucked in amongst all the old ledge. We're right. still doing their trick. Now we can use that boiler's power to come over here and heat up this indirect hot water tank to have plenty of hot water for the faucet. Remember, we had this without insulation, and you can see how much insulation there is now. Yeah, so for domestic, right. got it. So we got these manifolds everywhere, so now the radiant will have all these zones throughout the building. But we also have a completely separate cooling system. Something they didn't have back in right. 1890s either. Or didn't even think about it, okay? Right. So here's, here's an air handler that's right here on the first floor. You can see refrigerant lines right here, and this goes to duct work here on the first floor. But the refrigerant lines for seven different units inside the building seven. come back to here to distribution boxes like this. Now these connect to two outdoor super efficient inverter condensers outside. And what are those seven units you're talking about? Well, up in the office, we've got this picture frame unit. Oh. Out in the exercise room, we've got a ceiling mounted unit that'll put perfect temperature there. We've got a couple of small air handlers and we yeah. got the air handlers down here on the first floor. So that's going to make everything very comfortable. That's Not right. to mention all the new insulation makes this place yeah. tight as a button. Absolutely. And it's a reminder that if you're going to insulate, you got to ventilate. You got to bring fresh air in. And particularly in this case, we've got this crazy big range hood with a stove. We had to inches. bring in fresh air and preheat it in the winter. So new plumbing mechanicals from you guys, but also Heath, our electrician, gave us some new electricity. We've got a solar array up on the roof. We've yeah. got a new generator outside. He pulled an additional 200 amp service to the house. Yeah. So everything, mechanicals right. new in the entire home. It takes a lot to get a building like this ready for the next century. Good to see you. Thank you, Richard. All right. Thanks for watching. This old house has got a video for just about every home improvement project. So be sure to check out the others. And if you like what you see, click on the subscribe button. Make sure that you get our newest videos right in your feed.